Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my podcast. Uh, we have a very special guest today. We have uh, Nathan of uh, River Maya. Hi, Nathan. Hi, China. Hi, viewers. What's up? How are you doing, Nathan? I'm okay. I'm okay. I mean, uh, getting by, getting by with all this uh, COVID thing going on. So, uh, what's happening with uh, where you are with COVID? Uh, how's the situation there? Uh, I live in the suburbs of uh, Metro Manila. It's Las Piñas, and it's it's all right. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's okay. It's pretty much okay. I, I you don't really see like uh, people like uh, dying on the streets, but you know, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So far, yeah. But the the music musicians are. I think the one of the sectors that uh, hit badly, right? Because of the yeah, life. man, yeah. They're saying that we won't have gigs for like a year or two. It's right. Like we're the last sector to 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 open up business after everything else is okay. Yeah. So it's kind so, of pretty bad. We yeah. hit pretty bad, yeah. So were you able to do some uh, some music and stuff while there's a lot of time on your hand now? No, not really. I, I've been practicing a lot. Yeah, but uh, practice on technique and skills like that. But mostly what I'm doing is uh, uh, delivering stuff uh, for my coffee business and cake business, and that's it. But writing music, uh, well, the, the guys gave me a computer to write some stuff on it, but I haven't really sat down and opened it up, you know, and used it yet. I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a, the new program. I'm not used to it. Mm. I'm used to uh, recording in Logic and GarageBand, but this new program, I, I, I don't know how to use it yet. <laughs> yeah, I think you remember it, and I, I think I, I first met you in 2017. Uh, Fatal music acoustic. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. In Makati. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I bought all those magazines of you. Yeah. <laughs> I was pretty surprised that you had all those, you know, yeah, all because, those magazines. Yeah, because I, I actually collect pulps, so I actually have all the pulps from the number one. Yeah, man. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, Nathan, how long have, yeah, go ahead. How long have you been here? You've been here a long time? Yeah, I, this is already my 14th year. 14th year? Yeah. But how do you collect the back issues? You like talk to Vernon to get some of the stuff? Yes, yes, yes. I get uh, most of them. And then now, actually, some magazines Pulp don't have. I, I, I'm the only one who has a copy of that. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of like preserving it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Nathan, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and then uh, your earliest uh, memories of music? Ah, oh, I grew up in BF Homes. It's a subdivision here down south, Paranaque. Yeah. So, and uh, I had a pretty great childhood. Uh, I studied in an exclusive school. Met some of my friends there, like Junji. Uh, plays guitar for Iho. I met him there, and he was actually one of the few people that uh, influenced me. Yeah, to ask me if we could uh, start a band. Mm. He played guitar. I played bass, and he taught me a few things. Well, most of the things that I know. So that that was it. Uh, but um, we we started a band. It's called Bazura when we were kids, like around 14 to 15 years old, and it was a punk. Funk band, we played covers from Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Metallica, you know, right. so that old stuff, 80s stuff. Yeah, it was pretty great. Yeah, played in his house. He had a big house in Ayala, Alabama. And yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Man. Right. So, so what were the music you were listening to back then? Uh, mostly what, what my friends uh, were listening to. I listen to everything, so I listen to uh, ABBA, Carpenters, but if my friends listen to punk, 
that's you know that gives me an opportunity to listen to it too. But I'm I'm not really picky with music. I listen to anything with a good melody and a nice rhythm. That's it. How did you how did you pick up bass? Did you try other guitar first or you straight went Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I uh everybody wanted to play guitar, but right. nobody wanted to play the bass, right? <laughs> so I, I uh it fell on my lap. They were like saying, "Yeah, cuz uh Junji and Jay John, uh my friends were in the band, you know. They yeah. were like, uh so we're playing guitar and we need a bassist. Can you play the bass? Yeah, man. So, yeah, I can play the bass. It's just four strings, you know. So, <laughs> that was it. But it was, I'm glad that, you know, it fell on my lap. Uh, I mean, I'd rather play bass than guitar. You know? Right. So, Nathan, who who did you look up to for bass uh, when you were playing? Who are your favorite bassists? Uh, Flea, of course. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> Mike Hanno Paul, Juan de la Cruz. Uh, uh, what's his name? There's a lot of other people I, I can't remember. Uh, Geezer Butler from Black, Black Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, I like Jacko. I like uh, Stanley. Stanley Clark. Yeah. Right. So uh, I I I read that the the Rivermaya band actually started as Saga. Yeah, something like that because we didn't have a name, right. and that was the first name that we agreed to. But there were a lot of other bands named Saga, so kind of ditched that as soon as you know we we had a we had Perf in the band, we had a uh, a steady lineup because we couldn't really find we had some guitars try you know try playing with us but we didn't feel them like uh like like with perf with perf it was like uh you know it was a real band when he got it right so nathan can you tell me how the river maya actually formed uh well it was an audition and lisa lisa nakpil wanted me to uh, be part of a band, but it was it wasn't really River Maya then. It was Rome. It was uh, Kenneth of the Dawn and some other guys. Mm. And it was an audition, so I auditioned first, and then it was a Rico audition soon. And then I got Mark in the band. I got Bamboo in the band, and my teacher Perf, and that that was it. You know, it was an audition. Yeah, but I, but if it didn't work out for the the people I was already in, I just grabbed some of my friends to be in the band, uh, yeah. like Mark and Bamboo and right. Perf. Yeah, yeah. So, so, like that. so that's that's why it 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 didn't it didn't look like or sound like a band that is created from audition, right? Because it's all your yeah, band. yeah. But it started <laughs> from auditions, but. I, uh, we kind of, you know, uh, it was like, uh, how should I say this? Uh, I just snuck some of my friends right in the audition, so that's it. Because I've been playing with Mark and, and, uh, and hanging out with Bamboo a lot, so it was just, you know, right. It was just common sense to bring everyone together, so that was it. So, so you knew that Bamboo was singing back then? Well, he he was a he did a few commercials when he was a kid. Right. But uh, yeah, he he yeah, he's a, he's he's got a pretty natural, a great sounding natural voice. You know, he didn't need teachers or anything. So he would sing with a guitar, voice two men stuff, and it was really good. So that was it. When we lost our vocalist, uh, say, and he was like looking for a job. I said, hey man, you can apply for you know as a vocalist for us, and that was it. Right. So uh, the I I know that the first single you recorded was Ulan, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who wrote that song? Uh, I was Rico mo mostly. I wrote some of the music, but it was like seventy percent Rico. Yeah. I right. just some of the music. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because yeah. 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 Go ahead. And, 
What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ulan, and then I also like this one, the 214. You have a song yeah, 214, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was written before the band. Rico wrote that before, before River Maya. Right. He had like a demo, you know, like uh, it was it was really cool, you know, like he would do this MIDI thing with all the drums and the keyboards. Yeah. And uh, and then there, there's, there's this story behind 214, right? Rico is like, uh, I saw there's a video also he put out about the story behind 214. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because he wanted to name it like uh, the proposal. The proposal, but you know, it didn't sound rock and roll enough, so yeah, we, just, we changed it to 214. That was it. Yeah, what I like about River Maya is like you guys wrote a lot of these songs that are like anthems, like rock anthems, right? Epic. Yeah, man, yeah, but at the same time, you wrote a lot of these uh, kind of like romantic, uh, <laughs> sort of very romantic songs, also, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're yeah, we're pretty young by then. We Mark was only seventeen, so and uh, you know, most of us were going through our first and second relationship. So yeah, we wrote a lot of lot of romantic love songs when we were young. Yeah. Not so much when we were growing up, but when we were young, we were just writing them, you know, like you know, like crazy. Yeah. It's like pooping it out. You know. uh, Nathan, the during these records that the early records what were the bands that was influenced to to your sound the other foreign bands for example uh i don't we had different uh influences like uh me and rico we listened to most of the 80s stuff bamboo was into r b and rap mm. and mark and me we listened to folk and some funk and acid jazz uh perf was into the guitar thing so I, I can't really say that we had one influence. Right. Like River Maya as a band had one influence. We had we had so many things coming over from all of the members. So it was it's really hard to say. Uh, you know, like me and Rico, we love the uh, Tears of Fears, but some of the other members like uh, they don't they don't they they weren't into it as much as me and Rico. Right. Same same with the say uh Rage Against the Machine. Some of the members weren't really into, you know, some into it. It was like different members, different influences, something like that. Right. And then you guys uh, put out very, uh, the albums you put out like almost like every year, right? You had 1996, yeah. then Yeah, like two, two years in between albums. The record company was like, hey, you gotta make another album soon. You know? <laughs> That was the golden days of recording industry before internet came. So we were selling like multi-platinum albums every two years. It was crazy, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I mean, yeah, we had like multi-platinum albums like here the, in the 2000s with Bamboo, but during the 90s, it was crazy. It was, it, it was a different thing, you know, the tapes and all that. It was crazy. So yeah. now you have like... Uh, uh, whole albums, digital format, and all that, but it was different back then, you know. Right. And it sounded different. The tapes, and the, you know the the what do you call that? Forty fives. They sounded different. They sound different than CDs and you know MP3s. It was totally different. Yeah. Well, Nathan, you know this Facebook group. There's a Facebook group called Planet CD, Philippine group. Planet CD. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm a member. I think I'm one of the member of the. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so River Maya CDs is like one hot item in Planet CD. It's very hard to find now. <laughs> really? I yeah. know the 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 free stuff like uh, the album free is really hard to find and really expensive. Yeah. I'm really proud of that album. Man. <laughs> that was uh, I think the second album with Rico as our vocalist, and I'm I love that album, man. I mean. Amongst all the albums, that's my my favorite album. That's the one you you released like free, right? You actually wanted yeah, to release yeah. it for free. Yeah, 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 I love that album. And uh, we made the packaging. We uh, literally the band and the crew members were packaging the the CDs <laughs> on Mark's uh, business there, on computer business. It was fun. Yeah. 
We right. had the CDs made in Hong Kong or something like that. It was right. crazy, crazy time. And I think that album also won the New Rock Awards, right? Best album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I was I was watching some of the YouTube videos, the old ones, uh, and then uh, there, there's this interview with Martin Rivera and you guys once Bamboo left. You did yeah. an interview. It's it's so gracious how you guys you know handle that situation like you know bamboo staying back in the US and you still continue but yeah, yeah. you you handle it like very professionally right you guys it's it's really cool the way that you handle that situation yeah I mean, well yeah we were on TV so you know, <laughs> couldn't really say crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So when yeah. did you speak to Bamboo last time? What do you mean? I mean, when did you say when did you perform with Bamboo last time? I can't remember. Probably around two thousand ten or nine. Right. Say when? When? Nineteen East, probably nineteen East. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, you. But did, you did a reunion with like kind of a sort of unofficial sort of a thing with Bob yeah, and, Nico and Mark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was back in 2016. 2016. Yeah. 16, yeah. yeah. That was fun, but I, I, I was pretty messed up. I, I couldn't remember some of the songs, so I, we didn't, we didn't jam. It was like uh, we jammed right there on the spot. So yeah, it was fun, but at the same time, it's crazy. <laughs> so you, uh, Nathan, you left uh, River Maya. 2000, 2001, right? Uh, yeah. What What was the What was the feeling? Why Why you decided to leave? No, I didn't leave. I, I was kicked out. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was doing too much, you know, crazy stuff. <laughs> I, I I was really crazy back then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't leave. Yeah. Yeah. But that was also fun. I ended up hanging out with uh, Carl and we. We formed the band Kapatid with Ira and Ira Chico. Yeah. yeah. And that was that was fun too. Crazy fun, yeah. <laughs> a lot of crazy things going on. Yeah. How that uh, idea, how that happened, Kapatid happened? How how did how the what's the story behind Kapatid? Well, before I left River Maya, uh, I was hanging out a lot with Jay Hoon. Jay Hoon the drummer, right. our drummer, Kap Jay Hoon, Balbuena, and uh, and then he kicked me out of your mind and it just happened naturally. I didn't have a band. They were like, yeah, let's just do this band, you know, with Carl and, you know, Chico and Ira and that was it. Actually, basically when I get, got out of River Mai, that was when Kapatid started. Mm. Yeah. But we had like two songs already, me and Jae Hoon. And then when Carl came in the picture and Chico, that's when he started to write the songs at Ira's house. Yeah. Right. At Chico's. And then we re recorded it in Ira's house, 524 Edson. Yeah. You you you've been playing with Ira for a lot of lot of years, right? A lot of uh, Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even he was part of your original band, right? He, with, uh what band? Uh I I heard that you played earlier before River Maya with Ira. Oh, no, 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 Kapatid, no. Kapatid, right? You Kapatid, yeah, Kapatid. Kapatid. Yeah. And then, and then we formed uh, uh, Bamboo, yeah, with with him on guitars because you know it was I was already playing with him and Bamboo was coming home and you know we, we Bamboo told me that hey we're gonna make a band so you have a idea for a guitar player yeah I said Ira Ira is free blah 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 and we got big on drums and that was it actually ira still plays with sometimes for river maya right now right uh, he plays rhythm guitar and lead guitar at the same time yeah, i've been yeah I've, you know yeah because i noticed that uh, along the way after many years sort of river maya and bamboo sort of it's sometimes some shows it's like both of all the guys of both bands will be performing together, right? Some of the shows. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Because you guys are like. It was fun. It, yeah, yeah. But Ira and me, we, uh, 
we message a lot every week, but you know, we talk and mostly because of Jay Hoon. Jay Hoon wants to <laughs> uh, do some kapati stuff, so I talk to Ira almost every week, you know. Mm. Yeah. But we haven't re- I haven't really seen anyone after you know, since this COVID thing, only Ayman, our keyboard player from Rivermire, you know. Mm. Only like like this, like uh, on Zoom. Yeah. We did an interview early with River Maya, but that was it with Paco and uh, but you know, I, I kinda miss the guys. I miss playing a lot, you know. Yeah. On stage. Yeah, I miss that a lot. I practice every day, but mostly like jazz stuff, like uh, chromatics and uh, you know, like uh, solo stuff, but you know, I miss playing a lot, man. So, I miss doing that. So, Nathan, before this COVID happened, uh, typically, how many shows do you play uh, with Rima Maya? Like, monthly? For month, like, uh, four to five shows, sometimes six a month. Yeah. And every, basically, every weekend. We're lucky to have two a week, two, two gigs every weekend, but we have usually one big gig every weekend. We fly to Mindanao or, you know, Right. Visayas or take a, a drive to Northern Luzon, stuff like that. Right. Four to six times a month. And that was a, and that's pretty good. Because, you know, we, uh, now that I have a family, I just spend a lot of time with my family. And, you know, I work once a week. So that was a pretty cool setup. And I think the Mark and Mike, you know, they, they want it that way. So, it, mm. They're able to spend a lot of time with their families, unlike, you know, the olden days when you, like, play for one week straight, you know, come home a day, and the next day you're off again, you know. So that was a really cool setup. Yeah. So uh, going back to Bamboo Band, so you, yeah. there are two songs that, uh, you know, it's like uh, Filipino anthems, right? Yeah, it, man. Yeah. Noi P and then Hallelujah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that you also still still sing those songs, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Because I, I wrote those songs. Yeah. Can you tell I me wrote those songs. the how how the idea came for the Noi P song? <laughs> well, well, uh, uh, well. Some politician wanted to make to uh, ask us to write a song about uh, Agimat. Okay. So have, you have an idea who who that you know uh, politician is anyway? It's no. about Agimat. It's about anting anting, right? So uh, I was writing the song, and it eventually uh, didn't. You know, it, it had a line of Agimat on on the chorus, but eventually it became a song about Filipinos, right? right. So. After a while, it, it wasn't their song anymore. It was our song, you know. Right. So that was it. So we didn't actually give it to anyone. It was like, no, this this song is our song now, right now. <laughs> the but as all things, you know, uh, a lot of people helped us write that song. You know, like my friend Addy, he uh, he said bakas. You know, I don't know what bakas is. So bakas na madilim. You know, but the funny thing is, Addy's from the states, but he knew what what bakas meant. Right? So that was it. But it was uh, it's a great song. I think I, I love that song. I, I when I sing it right now, I sing it with all emotion hundred percent because I uh, I just feel it, you know. It's mm. uh, it's a uh, it's a song for all Filipinos, you know. I love that song. Yeah, for me like being here so many years and you know, you know my wife is a Filipina so I, I I observe what happens within the family, how how they react to certain situations, how they handle, you know, yeah, yeah. all the problems that. So when I hear that song, I can I can also feel that sort of a spirit that Filipinos like, you know, they can they can take any you know any any bad situation and they can make it good, right? Like they, yeah, they, yeah. that that sort of a spirit I I feel when I hear, even though I probably don't understand all the words. <laughs> yeah, but it's a it's a even even if it's a song for Filipinos, it's a it's a universal thing. Right. So you can right. So 
how should I say this? I mean, I I I still believe in that song, but I but I how should I say this? It's like uh, with all the globalization going on with social media, you have a glimpse of lifestyles from everywhere, right? And right. It's, the way I see it, it's like uh, all people are the same, man. You know. But it's just that one song I wrote it for Philippines, but it's a uh, it could change the words to to another nationality and it'll still be the same, man. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's the way I feel. I feel about it right now, you know. I mean, I love the song, but I'm not saying I'm like a, a brown power or something like that, you know. But right. it's for for everyone, yeah. But you're you live here. You you're virtually you know, you're a Filipino already, man. Yeah. Filipino by heart, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, even even uh, Sri Lankan saw me, and if I didn't speak, they will think I'm a Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned social media, Nathan. So you know, it's how so much negativity in, in social media. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so crazy, right? Because I I actually stopped sort of following so many things because I don't want to get involved. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. it's a it's a um, it's an outlet you know, for other people to put that anger out of there. Or, you know. But it's the thing about social media is how you think what what you want it shows on your you, you know on your feed. Right. If you're like into political stuff, it's just gonna come out there. If you're into funny stuff, it's gonna come out there too. My feed is just from, from. It's got political. It's got really funny stuff. It's got music. So it's a, it's a jumbo. It's a, it's a melting pot of everything. So, I post every everything I see, funny or not. Mostly funny, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I enjoy most of your posts. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's just fun, you know. I'm glad you. I'm glad you enjoy my posts, man. Yeah, yeah. I do enjoy, and then uh, you know. I think in one thing is we should be able to make fun of anything, right? That should be yeah, open. yeah, right. It shouldn't be yeah. like taken against you because I think that's that should be the case with social media, right? It's uh, yeah, people should have a sense of humor, right? It's not yeah, like yeah. shouldn't take them personally and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, Nathan, I remember after Bamboo, you you had another. Band for called Hijo. He, Hijo, or? Hijo, 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 Hijo. It's a uh, Spanish for uh, child. Yeah, Hijo. Yeah. So, uh, but that how long was that band for? I don't think it was long. You didn't have it for a long time, right? No, it was probably two years. Two years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what? I was. I love that band too. It's of crazy stuff going on. The recording. We recorded half of the album. Half of the album is still on my hard drive on my Mac, and I—that's a great. I, I'm I'm seriously thinking of you know, uh, you know, trying it one more time with the guys. I don't know if they want to try it again, maybe. But Vic is in the U.S. Maybe I don't know. We can record something over you know, uh, like a COVID style. We can. He has a studio in New York, so maybe, maybe if he's up to it, maybe we can do that too. You know, record something live over the internet, you know, with the guys. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, cause we, there's a couple of pretty good songs that haven't been released, so I, I'm not sure if you know. But I want to do that too, cause it's a great band. It was just for me personally. Uh, after that, I I went crazy, you know. Too many things going on, the drinking, the smoking, the smoking, and all that stuff. So it took a toll on my mental health. So, but now that I'm better, that I'm you know uh, healthier, I wanna uh, how should I say this? Uh, try to do the, some of the songs again, but not record it like uh, for an album. I just wanna do it live, you know, mm. like COVID nineteen li uh, live, yeah. Do some yeah. of the songs that we did get to uh, finish for the EP. Yeah. 
Yeah. But that was a great band. Great songs. Yeah. 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 I remember I remember seeing you that uh, one of these first sort of interviews I saw in Mix. You have you did a you did an interview on Mix, I think, for Hio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't remember. Yeah. I was too how should I say this? Too stoned the whole time. <laughs> I was just out of my mind. I was just busy recording some of the stuff, doing the demos for everyone. And you know, with 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 some of the stuff that I was doing, it's gonna break your mind at one point. So it took me actually quite a few years before I got my mind back to uh, yeah. I mean, a healthy mind, a healthy thinking mind. Because at one point, I was just fucking, I was paranoid and shit, you know. Yeah. But now I, I I feel better right now with all my biking stuff and all that, eating right, right. sleeping. Eight hours a day, so now I, I, I'm good. But during that time, I was just in my room, creating stuff, going crazy. But it was some. I think I we made some pretty great uh, songs and recording. But you know, you can't do that for an extended period of time on your head. It's gonna, it's gonna fuck you up, literally. So yeah. But now I'm back. <laughs> so I wanna. Uh, do some of the stuff, redo it, or record it uh, COVID-19 style, you know? Right. Like, yeah. So, if that uh, makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so Nathan, when uh, you returned to River Maya, what happened? When, why did you return to River Maya? I, I, well, I, we had this jamming with Mark at 19 East, right? And after that, we, we text each other, uh, message each other, and it was like, hey, what are you doing? Uh, blah, blah. And then he said, yeah, you want to play bass for us? I was like, yeah, man. I mean, why not? And then we jammed, and uh, me, uh, Mark, and um, Ryan, and Mike, and there was, it was just one minute, and, and you know, we were, like, smiling, and after, like, five minutes, after one song, we bought a a, a case of beer or two cases and we <laughs> and we just drank and it was it was fun you know it's like uh being back in my old band literally you know? yeah. but it was yeah it, it felt what it was you know i was back in my old band and after after like uh after like uh our gig or before before our first before my first gig with them that was in kawit kavite they asked me back in the band and i said yes that was it. It felt right, you know. It felt great. Yeah. And it just it was one of those things that you know, we did some of the old songs. You know, we did Hilo, we did uh, Condiman. You know, some of the stuff that you know that I like, like the the more weirder stuff. We did that too. And you know, it was just a blast you know, doing all those songs. Uh, it was it was great. Yeah. So you had to also play the songs that uh, Riva Maya did while you were not there, right? Yeah. <laughs> At first, I, I hated some of the songs, like Liwanag uh, Sadilim, or uh, what do you call that? Uma uh, Arao I Ulan. Ha I hated that song because, you know, I, I was out of the band and they were out with that single. It was everywhere I, you know, everywhere I go, I, I would hear that song on MTV, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> But any but song then, you like? Any yeah, song no, like? I, I hated it. But now that I'm in a band, I love those songs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't, you know, if, if it's uh, Mara Umula. I always sing on the cards because I love that song now. But, you know, like 20 years ago, I hated that song. I was like, I don't, don't want to hear that song, you know. But now I love that song. And then you were hearing the Isang Bandila, right, on abs <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, but I was... Isang Vanilla, I was already in in in, uh, in bamboo, so you know. Right. Uh, so so uh, I don't I don't I didn't like that song right. uh, that much. That much. Anyway, but we don't say we don't play that song. We don't play Bandila now. Right. No, we don't. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, one of these music videos that you did after you came back to River Maya, you did this song. Manila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, part of the 2017 album, right? Which we yeah, yeah, actually yeah. have. Uh, that music video is super cool. <laughs> the one really? Which, yeah, I, yeah I really liked it. <laughs> you know what happened on that video? 
on that day I was ha- I was having uh I was having the runs. I was just you know I had I think I had like LBM. Oh. I, I was whatever I ate I just poop it out. <laughs> I was just one of the most horrible experiences of my life. I was just I was on the after the take I was straight into the bathroom you know. I was just to to poop out whatever. Yeah. It was pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that was the uh, the main thing I could remember about that video. So every time I see that video, I you know re- remember the runs. But I know it's a great video. But yeah. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet in a long time. I watched it like once or twice. But then you know, some that's what I do. I, I watch after I we we record a song or a video. I don't listen to it that much after that. So that was it. I have to watch it again. Yeah, but it's a, it's a like I uh we 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 did a video in Raymond's house, ancestral house in in Manila, beautiful ancestral house. Oh man, you should see it. So and there were ghosts there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, there were ghosts. We were we went to the other rooms. There were some sections of the mansions that were sealed, yeah. and, but we we went in there anyway, and there was. Me, Mike, and Mark, and there was this thing that crashed, and there was nothing there. It was just a big crash, boom, and we went to the room, and there was nothing there. And you hear footsteps all around. I mean, I don't believe in ghosts, but it it, it happened right there, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. It's just and and like uh, I think uh, there, you know, it's. Anyway, I I don't think I should say it, but I think the 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 Meyer Doma, the, the like the the how should I say that? Uh, you know what Meyer Doma means? She's like a, the head of the the help, something like that. She died like a, a few few weeks before we filmed it there. Oh. Yeah, so it was like. A, it's crazy, but it, there were ghosts there. Promise, man, I'm, I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nathan, one one thing I I was seeing in on your there's a Wikipedia page for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that was mentioned is, which I believe is true, is that you're one of the one of the Pinoy artists that's like been in like so many magazine covers. <laughs> Me. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, well, for for pop, yeah, and, and other, yeah. Yeah, because I I actually have like all of these. Oh no! <laughs> you remember this one? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> one of the girls was bleeding. Yeah, she was like bleeding, man. Right. You could smell it in the room. Vernon was, okay. you know, Vernon was crazy, <laughs> coming yeah. up with this crazy stuff, and then man. This one, the bikini, bikini. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember so that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Bikini inspector, I remember that. Yeah, and then this one with the Kapatid one. Yeah, with Carl, man. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's uh thank thanks for signing all this uh, when we met last time. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I was surprised and you know where they were in good condition. Yeah, I, I have a blast when people you know ask me to sign some of the you know pop. Uh, magazines that we were in, you know, it's great that people collect that stuff. You know, it's great. I I, I miss I miss that actually. Yeah. One thing to miss you, you know, the music scene when it was more vibrant during the '90s and early two thousands. You know, well, comparing it now with all the COVID thing, you know, I miss it more. <laughs> with all that's going on right now, or well. I shouldn't say what's going on, with, what's not going on, because nothing's moving right now. There's no music. I'm glad that some of the some of the guys are putting out stuff right there, like Zill. That's really interesting, interesting stuff. You know, uh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like the two videos that he that he put out. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so Nathan, you are also a mountain biker, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gravel bike, a mountain bike. Yeah. So, uh, where do you normally bike? Like, uh, well, mostly, 
well, mostly now I do, uh, well, before the COVID thing, uh, I, I was always here. We have a fill and vest trail here. It's like 12 to 13 kilometers of trails. Right. Sometimes we'd go to the valley in Santa Rosa uh, or we'd go to La Mesa, mm. La Mesa Dam. Yeah. There's a trail there in, in Quezon City or, we, or we'd go to DRT, uh, DRT, Doja Remedio Street in, in Bulacan or and we'd go, some, sometimes we'd go to uh, what's this? Uh, in Mount Balagbag, that's a really nice. Got some really nice trails there, and yeah, man, that's it. Uh, sometimes I go to. We join the Brusco race in uh, General Lacar in Quezon. Mm. Yeah, it was, that's pretty my. That's where what I'm addicted to right now. Before I'm addicted to stuff, but now. But now I'm addicted to biking, man. It's really, I'm glad you, you're also into biking, right? Yes, yes. But I, I yeah. ride folding bikes. Uh, I have yeah, bikes urban. Too. Yeah, I, I have to get into that too, man. <laughs> yeah, urban biking inside the metropolis using an urban bike, uh, a folding bike. I want to get in that too. But yeah. now, yeah, I have to, but I, I, I like your bike, man. It's a, it's a really expensive bike, right? <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I fell in love with that bike. Then I, I, I don't. I, I feel like if I try to ride a different bike, I feel like I'm cheating on my bike, so I don't do it anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's a it's a great bike for you know uh, for urban biking. I should get one too. So if I like go to uh, BGC, I yeah. could ride the I could ride the the point to point bus bring my bring my folding back there and then when I get to BGC fold it. Yeah, you know yeah. that's you know I, I I need a bike that my bike right now is it's, it's a big bike, you know. Yeah. Your big bike. So I can't really like just fold them and put them on a bus, you know. I have to bike all the way there. Sometimes, you know, it's uh, it's crazy when you bike on the streets in Manila, it's like the tricycles and the the jeepneys they try to bump you off. It's crazy. Like the trucks so yeah, man. Yeah, but I love biking. It saved it saved my saved my life, saved my sanity. Yeah, yeah I owe a lot to it. You know, the yeah. second my life is uh, you know, family, uh, biking and rock and roll, and that's it, man. That's yeah. It. Be before I was when I started biking, I'm quite like scared to go in like in uh, even in just Ayala or even Edsa. Before I was so scared to go, but, but now. There's no fear anymore. I can go anywhere. I, <laughs> yeah. I, bike, I bike myself. I, I actually bike. My favorite route is actually going to Bulacan. I do. Bulacan? It. Yeah, yeah. I go to Malolos. That's my favorite ride because it's kind of flat. It's not very challenging, but yeah. normally it's like 50k one way. So I can it's do It's 100k. Like 100k, yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> you do that? Well, just, just let me know and I can go to. Where do you live? I live in Magati also. You know Tryon, the bike shop Tryon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah near the Tryon bike. Shop. Near that place. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. If you ever come back, come this way. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I haven't been to Malolos, have But I want to do that too because that's actually near. I I go to Capo Luneta when I go up north. Right. But I haven't gone to QC yet. Well, that part I haven't biked from Las Pinas to QC. I bike from Las Pinas to Manila, right. Luneta, Capo, you know, that, that whole thing right there. But I haven't, you know, done it. Yeah, I, I want to go to Malolos. That's like uh, another 30 kilometers or 40 kilometers from Luneta or something like that. Man. Yeah, actually, so, on that route, I've done all the way to Clark and back, actually, with the Brompton Group. We went yeah. Clark, and then uh, on your side, I went up to Los Baños and back. What from Makati all the way to Yes, all the way from Makati, and then on the way back, on the That's way crazy. back, on the way back we pick pick up the Bukopai. You know that yeah. place, Bukopai place. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm carrying the Bukopai on the back back track. <laughs> yeah. So where did you go up until Los Banos only UP and then back? UP spent 
the you know few like one or two hours in in Las pa in the in UP eat eat there and then go back. <laughs> yeah, then we should we should yeah one time when you go to Moa or something, let me know. We can meet up there or what else, man. Yeah, but you go to Moa. You bike to Moa. Yeah, yeah, I do. But recently, I've been actually active in more of uh, running and walking because I do these long walks. So I, I walking. I, yeah, I do like twenty km walks, ten km walks. What? Yeah, I, just today I did like sixteen km before this talk. <laughs> sixteen kilometer walk. Yeah, I've done like ten kilometer walk, but not you know the, that that's crazy. Is it hard? I mean, is it? No, you just do it on your own, you know, pace. You don't just. Uh, okay. I do all my errands, and I go. I went to the CD shop. I went to the mall. Whatever I need to buy, just. just you just walk it. You don't use your bike anymore. Recently, I haven't. After this quarantine, I didn't actually cut on my bike yet. Maybe I should do now because now I think we can, right? Yeah, we we yeah, man. But I haven't me. I haven't ridden like really far. Right. But, uh, most that I've gone is like 50 kilometers, but that's it. Yeah, uh, but I, I'm, I'm kind of worried. Like, you know, there was this news like <laughs> bikers went and they removed the mask and then <laughs> they got yeah. caught. Got caught. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. <laughs> yeah. But I think they, they allowed it to take it off if you drink your water. Unlike, the, you know, like what happened to Howie Severino. Yeah, they, they brought him to jail or something. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Because you put all these people together and then you they all get COVID, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 doesn't make any sense. But you know, that's that's the uh, Philippines right now. I mean, it's uh, don't make any sense. <laughs> what they doing? What they doing? Uh, yeah, uh, the the thing with me because Philippines has given me a good home, so I don't try to criticize anybody uh, yeah. i just uh, i just observe i just you know just take care of my family and then i you know i yeah. do what i do i don't i don't try to you know judge anybody or who yeah, 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 yeah. Is, because it's not my place because i should i'm a guest so i should be you know just act as a guest so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you understand i understand i understand, I understand. yeah so yeah. <laughs> nathan you also i i saw you you have put Pit bulls? Ah, just one. Just one. Oh. Yeah, but I, I, I've had like three before. Three. Right. Yeah. Oh, this is the third one. Yeah. yeah. Is it big now or still small? She, she's big. She's uh, it's a, they're, they're pretty big dogs. Powerful dogs. They're, right. But they're, they're, re they're really nice. You know, people think they're like they're vicious dogs, but they're that's because they're easy to train. They understand quickly. So if you say stop doing that you know and they they won't do it again so if you like uh, train them to attack people then they're, they're going to be nasty like that but if you if you uh, if you hug them always if you treat them like uh, you know like uh, a loved one then they'll be really nice to other dogs too you know and other people like by this she's really nice uh she's just a sweet dog you know because that's we show him that you know we right. show her that we that we love her you know, so that's it. Like fifty percent, you know, like uh, like she stays in the house for like uh, half of the day inside, and but when it's night, we have to bring her out. You know, bring her in uh, early in the morning, bring her out for lunch so she can eat lunch. You know, so that's it. I all, we also have a a golden retriever, but that dog is crazy. You know, no. she 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 attacked my pit bull, and you know. <laughs> It's crazy, you know. She's crazy. Uh, they're all adopted dogs. Cause that's what we do. We adopt dogs uh, right. instead of, yeah. We like older dogs because they're they're steady. They don't destroy, you know, the stuff lying around. You know, because when you get a puppy, they just they chew everything. You know? They destroy yeah. the right. So, uh, and it's hard. It takes like three three years for for a dog to mature. So before they become steady, so we we just we like adopting more than um, raising them. Mm. That's it. <clears throat> so also, I see your pictures that uh, 
sometimes you play dress up with your with your daughter you know all this uh, <laughs> crazy stuff right so whatever she asks you to do you have to do right when you're a dad yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nothing you can do when she says hey you got to do this cuz uh, uh she's uh she lives uh she's the only child with us so whether she doesn't have any playmate here at home so i i'm I'm her playmate, so whatever she wants to do, me and the pit bull. So whatever, you know, she wants us to do, uh, we do it. So that's it. You, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. So Nathan, be, being in a band and you know rock star, and then what's what happened when you became a dad? What's the differences you, you well, experienced? Well, I was afraid. I I didn't want to become you know like a dad. I didn't. I was having too much fun when I was. Uh, when i was single and when you know when i was basically living a crazy life rock and roll life but now i enjoy this life more than you know the the, the past life that i had i like i like staying home you know i like staying home i like uh, i like doing things for my family i like washing the dishes mm. i like uh, taking the dogs for a walk you know instead of like going out drinking man, getting fucked up you know that's that's not for me i, I should have done this earlier you know I, i i'm enjoying my life right now i mean even with the covid thing going on i i i still i still love, i know, i still love what's going on hap what's happening you know it's uh it's it's better for me it was just too crazy back then sometimes i see some of the neighbor kids you know uh having the 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 past life that i had you know going home at 4 o'clock 3 o'clock i'm just like these guys are crazy you know anything can happen outside there you know crazy shit you know, should go home earlier you know uh, it's just like it's a uh, uh domesticated life is better than you know <laughs> wild jungle the wild jungle out there it, it's worked for me man i didn't know i I didn't know I would reach the, my age, like 45, and be, you know, be a dad. But you know, hey, wait, I'm, I have extremely low battery. Can I just plug in? Yeah. Bieber, wait, I just called. Bieber. Bieber, no, but now. Ah, yeah. Alright. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. <clears throat> so Nathan, I saw this uh, another video that you're jamming in your garage uh, disturber band. What? I saw your jam on in the garage uh, disturbo band. What is that disturbo? <laughs> What's that? I saw this YouTube video. Somebody posted that you're you're doing a jam in the garage with some people. <laughs> yeah, that happened a lot back then. Uh, is it charging? <laughs> yeah, man. But I'm looking for. Um, we're looking for a place that we can jam, like mm. some of the some of my friends here, like Bea, Ayman, and Coco. We're looking for a place to jam, like not in a studio, but in like an open air garage, a big garage where you can put some stuff and play. But no one's actually, no one's uh, hey, use my garage, because mm. I, I don't want to put it here, you know. Yeah. My dogs are gonna I mean, bite the stuff, the amps. I don't. I don't want that to happen. But I'm looking for you know someone who has a garage with preferably with their own with the drum kit already, and uh, so I don't have to bring my amp and all this stuff. Yeah. 
Nathan, now this BF Homes is typically, I remember that there's a lot of, uh, it's, it's famous for food, right? There's a lot of restaurants, BF area. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So what's happening with the COVID? How, how are they coping those restaurants? Mostly, mostly take out. Uh, okay. I don't, I, I used to live there. This is another village. It's like separated by a street. So right. that's another village. This is like, a, this is the old BF, like the really old BF 19, right. I think 1959. Or, so we don't have restaurants here. We have one, we have just one restaurant and that's uh, Mang Raul's Barbecue. It's a famous Mang Raul's Barbecue. Right. It's right, a, right across the street. You can smell the barbecue all day long, man. <laughs> but not now, because they, they don't, uh, it's COVID-19, so. So they, the restaurant business got hit really bad, too. So they don't have that much business. They have takeout. Mm. But it was, you know, not unlike, uh, but yeah, in BFA, they all, all have, they have these restaurants, but it's mostly takeout right now. Yeah. My friend knows this uh, drive-by tacos. They're really good, too. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Man, if you come here, I can bring you. That's what we do. Yeah. Like some of the guys, uh, we go around and we just bike all around and we eat. We eat uh, uh, shawarmas. We have Persian, Syrian shawarmas, tacos, man, Chinese food, you name it, man. If you come wow. here, we, I, I can bring you around. That's really good <laughs> food. And it's mostly owned by it's uh, mom and pop operations. Yeah. Like a family owned. It's not like a, it's not like McDonald's or Kentucky or Jollibee. Like it's a big corporation. No, it's mostly, you know, owned by family. So it's really good, man. If you come, bring some of my friends, we can do a, a culinary bike tour. Yeah. We'll yeah. do that more. Yeah. Like some of the guys from, from Ayala and BF, hey, where can we, uh, where can we eat here? Yeah, I'll take you around. We go around and bring it to some of the place. They enjoy it, man. It's like uh, 20, 50, 20 kilometers, eco eco. It's not bad. It's not like, you know, you bike and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nothing like that. It's just like, hey, can, can we eat here? Yeah. We have like, uh, it's Ian's Burger. It's like, uh, it's 50 bucks, but it's char char grilled burgers. It's really good. Yeah, it's really You should try yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, Nathan, um, any message to the people who's uh, who will watch this video? Ah, God bless, man. Uh, keep on keeping up. Uh, that's it. I mean, persevere, and whatever happens, you know, have a good attitude about things, and don't do drugs, and yeah. that'll <laughs> right. fuck you up. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. Anybody you want to shout out to? Uh yeah, I mean. My bandmates, Mark and Mike, and yeah, Raymond, Kaka, and the crew, Ayman, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I think, yeah, guys listening out here, you should, guys should get a bike, you know, get a bike so you can enjoy the Philippines because there's a lot of, you know, places in the Philippines that are only accessible by bike. So, yeah. get a bike, get a bike, get a bike. <laughs> the only, uh, it's uh, not only for you; it's healthy for you and for the environment. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so uh, Nathan, this is this was so fun. Thank you for doing this with me. Yeah, thank uh, you. But I'm sorry about the first part. I was nervous, you know, and I, <laughs> and I, I don't speak English that often. I only speak English to, to Biba, uh, Octavia, but you know. <laughs> yeah, man. sorry about that, but I, I, as the interview got, you know, got longer, I got more comfortable. But at the first time, I was like, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. It's, uh, sorry, man. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so thanks, uh, you know, stay safe and uh, hopefully we can bike together. Yeah, man, just let me know. I can bring you around. Uh, I know some really good places we can go around here. So just, just, just let me know. And yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Thank All you. All right, man. Bye, China. Bye. 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 Bye.